She thought to herself. Who am I? Why can't I see anything in here? What's going on? Alice! Came the loud voice of the man. Huh? Alice, have you even been listening to me? Said Alice's father. I I'm sorry, Papa. I must have dozed off. Oh, Alice. I swear you wouldn't be able to pay attention even if your life depended on it. You've got to get a grip on that wild little mind of yours. <laughs> Her father said with a small chuckle. Alice smiled at his remark, and then she remembered something about the daydream. Why it came to mind, well, that she could never place her finger on. She had been, quote, dozing off, as her mother called it, rather often lately. It never occurred to the small girl that any of the daydreams ever meant anything. They were usually only a few moments long, and never really were memorable. One thing she could remember was the sound of a clock, darkness, and a feeling of... falling. Yes, yes, that was, that was it. She had to be falling. Or... was she floating upwards? Oh, this is just a mess of nonsense. They're just daydreams. Silly Alice, you're off your head. Crazy. Mad. The word seemed... Strange to her. Almost like she knew something about it. Like there was a secondary meaning to the word. There you go again, Alice. She thought. You've got, You've to, got get to get a grip on that wild little, little mind of yours. <laughs> rang her father's words in her head. He was right. She did have to start focusing more. Doting off in class again, Alice. Rang out Mrs. Cromwell's voice. Oh dear, I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Cromwell. I'm sure you are, my dear. You really must learn to stop dozing off while you're awake, especially so while in class. Dreams not for the classroom, they are for sleep. Which is for home. You're starting a bad rabbit, young lady. Alice paused. Could you repeat that, Mrs. I must have misheard you. I said that you're starting a bad habit. There you go again, never paying any attention. I am this close to alerting your father of this. Please, Mrs. Just one more chance. I promise it won't happen again. <sighs> Very well. You get one more chance. But no more daydreaming. It was then that she heard her mother call her down for dinner. On the way inside, Alice decided to stop by the garden to see how the flowers were faring. It was only barely spring, so they required some extra care to snap out of their winter spell. But they were strong. They would pull through, as they always did. The roses were always Alice's favorite, particularly the white roses. They were just so pure, so clean, so wonderful. Wonder. Hmm. Another strange word. But how could it be strange? It was nothing special. It's a relatively normal phrase. Why then did it seem so strange to her? Maybe not strange. No, thought Alice. Not strange. Familiar. Familiar. But how? Of course she had heard the word spoken before. It was nothing new. As she approached the entrance to the garden, she gazed out at the wondrous flowers of the land. Land. I wonder how the land is like. Does it have feeling? 
If I poke it, does it hurt the land? Am I part of the land? As her thoughts ran about, she noticed her cat Dinah run into her vision. She so loved her cat Dinah, she cherished it so. Cherished. Cherish. Cherry. Chess. Chess. Cheshire. Cat. Cheshire Cat. Alice knew the feeling well now. The feeling of her mind slowly slipping into her own world of fantasies. Her land of wonder. Alice! Came her mother's annoyed voice. The voice was enough to snap Alice out of her daze. Alice, I've been calling you for dinner over an hour ago. Child, you really got to start listening. Sorry, Mother, I was thinking of the flowers. And then there was the Cheshire Cat and... Cheshire Cat? Interjected her mother. Suddenly, a worried expression painted her mother's face. Alice, I thought we talked about this. About what, Mother? About your silly little imaginary creatures. There's no such thing as a Cheshire Cat. You better stop this foolish daydreaming business. Alice was shocked. What could have spurred her mother to become so angry so quickly? Was it the cat? But why would she be mad at Dinah? Mad, no, no. Not anger. That was definitely... Fear. Afraid. But why? Alice was confused. Why would her mother become afraid of something as simple as a harmless kitten? Had it really been an hour? No, no, now it was two or, or three. Was she even in time? What made time? Clocks. Clocks that tick and talk and tick and talk. Just. What? Hello? Mother? Father? Dinah? Dinah? Is that you, girl? Dear, I can't see a thing in here. Hello? Who's there? Answer me now, screeched Mrs. Cromwell. Alice nearly jumped out of her seat at the loud booming of her angered teacher's voice. This is it, young lady. You left me with no other choice but to notify your father. And before Alice knew what was happening, she was sitting in her principal's office, listening to her father as he lectured her. Alice, this has got to end. This little game has gone on quite enough. This daydreaming nonsense is going to stop today. I'm calling Dr. Richards in the morning, and we are ending this. Dr. Richards. His name brought little to the mind that could be considered as enjoyable, or nice, or caring, or... Late. She was late. But... What for? Being late. It made her hair stand on end. Wait, no, no. Not H-A-R-E, H-A-I-R. Hairs in March. March hair. Mad. It made the March hair mad when Alice was late. 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 Late for an important date. A date with who, when, and what was going on. Not 
this again. Alice. You are late, Alice. Late for a very important date. You are late for a date in March with the hair. And he is mad. You are late, Alice. From the darkness, Alice could vaguely make out a wide-toothed, glowing smile. Where did she know that smile from? Those teeth. They looked a lot like... A vampire? No. A wolf? No. Cat! Not paying attention to me, belted Dr. Richards. When had she gotten here? And how? Had she been here the whole time? Was she asleep? Was she dreaming it all? And her date? What of it? With the doctor? No, no. He was mad at her. Mad at her. Ladder. Matter. Clatter. Shatter. Hatter. Piped Alice. Excuse me? The hatter. The party. The hair. It's March. It's March. And I'm late for a date with a hatter. And the hair. And the car. The, the treasure one. The room grew quiet. The doctor seemed to have the same expression of fear that Alice's mother had worn. But why was he afraid? Of the hair? Of the hatter? Of... Wonderland. Oh, God. No. Whispered the doctor. I am terribly late for the tea party. The hatter gets right stained when I arrive late to the party. Alice, I thought we had forgotten about Wonderland. The doctor's tone had become shaky, startled, scared. Oh, but doctor, don't you know about the rabbit? The, the white one, he wants us to follow him down the rabbit hole into Wonderland, said an excited Alice. Alice, we're going to try something new. I want you to close your eyes for me. So she did. Now then. Take a deep breath in. So she did. And let it out. Now then, Alice, I want you to repeat after me. There is no such thing as Wonderland. There is no such thing as... Alice? No reply. Alice! He repeated. Alice Liddell! Yes, Doctor? Replied a much more contain Alice. Her voice was quiet, distant, almost as if she were in a trance. Trance, thought the doctor. Hypnotization from a clock. A clock that ticks and talks, just like a clock. Dr. Richards. Dr. Richards snapped out of his daydream, only to be met with Alice's smiling face. Are you quite all right there, Doctor? Yes, yes, I, I apologize for that, dear. Must have dozed off. Now, where were we? Uh, yeah, repeat after me. There is no such thing as the Mad Hatter. There is no such thing as a Mad Hatter. There is no such thing as the March Hare. There is no such thing as a March Hare. The White Rabbit. Doctor. Who's there? Doctor. 
Who is that? Show yourself. What have we been waiting for, Dr. Richards? Dr. Richards! Screamed Alice's father. Huh? Did you hear me? Afraid not. Apologies. Would you mind repeating? Did you make any progress? What did you find out? The doctor began to tremble. He had no idea that he was doing so until Alice's father pointed it out to him, however. I don't know anything for sure. I'll need a few more days with Alice before I can offer you any concrete information. I, I, I just pray that I'm wrong so far. What do you mean? The doctor leaned in close in order to whisper into his ear. She's starting to remember Wonderland. Alice's father also began to shake. Fear soon filled his body, and a ghost-white complexion fell across his face. You're positive of that. Don't freak out. Not yet, anyways. We can only hope that she doesn't remember... him. God help us all if she does. Please, Doctor, help her! I will do all that I can, but if I were you, I would consider a... backup plan. You mean... Yes, the very one. But how? I'm her father, for Christ's sake. I don't even know if I could follow through with it. If push comes to shove, you must decide who will protect. And if you don't, then run. Just take your wife and run. How long? Until. How long until you can be sure of what you're telling me? Give me a week, then I will get back to you with whatever I find, I promise. For your sake. I hope you're right. This isn't this is good. good. How is How it even, even possible? possible? I thought I we had taken care of this last time. time. She can't, can't remember. remember. There's, There's no, no explanation for how she could possibly remember. remember. Not, Not after, after what, what we did. did.